Are you ready for another Easter project? Christy here from Crafty Christy's Creations and I have just the thing for you. I'm gonna show you how to make this super cute Easter truck tea towel. So stick around for all the fun. Okay, here I am in Silhouette Studio and I've already uploaded the Easter truck design and I've already played with the colors to make it match the heat transfer vinyl colors that I'm gonna be using just so I can get a better visual of what it's going to look like on my finished product. And then I've also gone ahead and folded up my um, tea cloth, how I plan on folding it to display it in my kitchen, and then um, just measured what the width that would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and resize this design to the size that will fit on my tea cloth. So when I measured it all folded, how I'm going to do it, I have just over 12 inches. So what I'm going to do is control A to select everything and control G to group. So now it's all one design. I'm going to come up here to my aspect ratio, make sure that it's locked. What this means is that as I change one proportion, uh, meaning as I change the height or the width, the other will move in proportion, keeping things the same. So as I change my width, the height will adjust to keep it the same uh, ratios. So I'm gonna go ahead and make mine, um, we're gonna do a 10 inch width. And I think that'll fit really well on my tea cloth. And then you can see that gives me about a seven inch height and I think that'll be just fine. I'll have lots of room on my cloth. I'm going to go ahead and come over to my page setup and now I'm going to change my media to letter because that is about the size of most of my heat transfer vinyl sheets and I want to make sure that everything's going to fit as I cut it out. Now what I can do is go ahead and right click and I'm going to ungroup my design. The problem with heat transfer vinyl. Uh, it's really hard to layer things all up before you apply heat. Um, so normally I would go ahead and add registration marks to do that, but it's not going to be that helpful in this situation. So in order to save space, I am going to go ahead and just kind of cut out everything independently. So even though like my egg here and my happy Easter, are this going to be the same color. I'm not going to leave this big gap for everything to make sure it lines up correctly. I'm just going to eyeball everything because I know that as I heat up one, uh, one layer, when I go to lay it down, it's going to expand a little bit. So nothing's going to fit completely perfect anyways. So now what I can do, I've already ungrouped, so I can just start pulling things off to the side. Do you find this helpful? Make sure you smash that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any future Silhouette Studio tutorials. Now let's jump back in where we left off. And you'll see this design just really, it leaves the spaces here for my different colors. You've just got the truck and then you've got the wheels. And um, the wheels, I'll probably leave that distance uh, just to kind of help me. I haven't decided, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the truck. And um, actually, you know what, before I do all that, undo control Z to undo. Let's make everything easy on ourselves. Because we're using heat transfer vinyl, let's go ahead and group this all again. We're going to go ahead and mirror everything before we cut it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mirror. It doesn't matter which direction you mirror. And then I can take my original and I can hit delete. Now I can bring this over, ungroup, and now we're ready to get working. So I can move all these things over. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn that truck. I'm holding down shift as I turn, that's gonna get me a good angle there. And then um, I'm kind of looking at what I have here. I can just cut, you know, maybe a uh, 
like a 10 or 11 piece, 11 inch piece here, 11, I could do like an 11 by 11 by four and that'll fit. And then um, I can leave a little gap and cut the rest. So I'm going to do that. So let's change our setup here and I'm just going to say it's a 12 by 12 and I'm going to change my transparency a little bit here so I can see through. So that way I can go ahead and get all this cut out in one go. And then I can grab, I'm going to try to leave myself and I'm going to cut all the way to the four here. So I'm going to leave myself a little room. So I'll start my next color at the five and at the top here just to make sure I have enough. That's not going to give me enough room for that. But we can do this purple one here. And then I can just cut a really small chunk. I can come down here to the three and just cut me a little chunk here. And uh, I'm going to cut this, you know, a little bit bigger than what I need for these pieces. But I can kind of piecemeal this together. And, um, you know, I think I'm just going to. I'm going to leave the wheels like this. It'll be a lot easier to just stick them on than try to cut one and then cut the other and get them placed. I can go ahead and do that as well. It'll, you know what, let's do it. We're going to release our compound path. I'm going to grab this wheel, make a compound path. And this one, make a compound path. I can stick them closer together now. Now we can group these. And then I can cut them out. So now I can put them here. We can start them at the top at the eight. And I'm just going to use a little bit of the gray to do that. And then I can put down here at the bottom. I can do my happy Easter, my happy Easter all the way across. And then I can put my egg over on this side. So as you can see, I've got my mat, I've got my colors, and then I've got my screen up here to help me so that way I can make sure that I'm going to cut things for the right areas. So I'm going to start with my blue and I can click on my design on my screen and I know I'm going to go four inches wide and just 10 inches tall. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Um, I'm going to measure kind of where my four inches is from the edge here. And then I'm just going to make a little slice. There's my little cut. Now I'm not very good at straight lines, but we're just going to do the best I can here. And I'm just going to try to cut a nice straight line down that four inch mark. So, and if I can't cut a straight line, what I can do Let's pull out my paper trimmer. I can also, and this you may find as a much easier idea. Now I've got the shiny side down as I'm cutting, so that way it's going to cut through. I'm going to pull out my extra piece here to show my four inch mark. Okay, there's my four inches and I am just going to cut and that cut it through beautifully. There's my scrap. Now this is, um, I believe 11 inches long. So I think it'll be okay. I don't know that it's going to be a problem anywhere else. 
But what I could do is I can come in here and I can just trim one inch off. That is not hard to do. So if I know this is 11 inches long, I'm gonna come to the 10 inches because that's all I need. Press that on there and then I can go ahead and cut that inch off. So now this is my piece that I need. Again, the shiny side is going down so that way it's gonna cut through the correct side. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my mat. Okay, and even still, I'm a little bit bigger than the four inches, but that's okay. That's gonna work just beautifully. All right, so my next one I have on here starts at the five inch mark, and that is my purple egg. And it goes down one, just about two and a half inches. So we're gonna go down three inches, and we're gonna make it two inches wide. So again, I'm gonna leave my ruler out here and I'm going to cut a piece that is three inches. First what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some marks. I don't want to use up a ton of this if I don't have to. So I'm going to bring in my ruler and I'm just going to go, uh, what did I say? I needed to be over two inches. And I'm gonna use my pen and make a little mark here. Just a very tiny dot, you can't even see it. And then I'm gonna go this way and I'm gonna go three inches. So that way, now I know, so I can cut along my two inch mark and not go down past that three inches. Oh, and I can't see my two inch mark. So let me redo that two inch mark. So I can put this in on my two inch mark. Put that two inch mark right there in, in my cutting. I'm gonna cut that down to my three inch mark, which is over here. And there's a little ruler on the side here that I can just watch. So cut to my three inches. And then I can go ahead, this one I think I can just probably freehand cut. And then just kind of meet them up a little better. All right, so now I'm gonna take this one, again, shiny side is down. And I'm gonna line this up starting at my five inch spot on my mat. And it goes across two inches and down. And down three inches. So that is where my egg's gonna go. I'm gonna scoop my egg over. I'm gonna use my arrow key and scoot that over just a little bit more to make sure it fits within that area really well. That looks better. And then we're gonna do our uh, kind of greenish colored egg here. And this one is three inches tall and a and we'll, we'll do two inches wide. Um, so again, I'm just gonna make my little mark at two inches wide. And then we'll go this way, three inches tall. So I know where to make my cuts. So again, I'm gonna put this in here, get my little line right in the lines, and then I can go 
up that three inch mark to about where I know it's going to cross my two inch mark. Flip it over. Put my other mark in here. And cut that. And it looks like I just missed a little corner here. And again, shiny side up. So this one now for my landmarks, I started at the three inches and then at the five inch mark. So the five inch mark here, and I'm gonna count down. Here's one, here's one, two, here's my three. So this is gonna go right here and this one runs a little bit more. So I'm gonna come down to my fourth box and set it right there. And then I'm just gonna take what's on the screen and I'm gonna move it down to my fourth box here. So one, two, three, fourth line, and then fourth line across, fifth line down. And that is where that corner is gonna be. All right, and then I've got my gray for my wheels, which is gonna be next on the side here. And with those, looks like I need about three and a half by, uh, by two. So we'll mark our two inch mark. So we're gonna go this way two inches, or we're gonna go this way two inches, and then we're gonna go three and a half inches this way. So I've got my three and a half and then I can just cut right there and that'll be perfect. So I'm just gonna line up the edge of my line here. I'm gonna cut that two inch. And then I can go ahead and turn it and cut right along that line. Okay, and there is my wheels. And this is gonna go at the, the eight inch mark on here. Again, we are doing our shiny side down. And I'm just gonna line that up. And yes, there's a little bit of pen mark on there, and that's okay. Um, there's enough of a little bit of a gap that that will be part of my scraps. So that'll be fine. And then um, that looks good there. So we've got those, and then now for the pink. So as you can see, my scrap for my pink is already irregular, which is totally fine. And then what I'm gonna cut on the screen is also irregular. So what I could do um, to make my life a little bit easier, I could cut another spot for my pink um, egg and do another little square like this, and then do something different for this, which I think is going to be the easiest way to do that. So I think I don't have to have these together. So I can go ahead and put this, I can put this egg right here and do again, I like to try to stay kind of on the same lines. So we were on the five coming down and now we're gonna be at the eight coming down. And then I'm gonna come across to my three. And um, this one will be one, two, we'll do three inches by two inches, a two by three, which I can proudly cut out of this length right here. And let's see what we need for this. This is a 10, a 10 by, we'll do 10 by two. So if I need 10 wide, I'm gonna have to cut that out of this kind of fuller section here. What do I have right here? Okay, so we'll have to come down and use this section down here. And so what I might do is just cut 
a two inch section off the bottom and then call that my big piece. So I'm just gonna measure two inches. And I think I'm just gonna make a few marks so I know right where that two inches. And then we'll just cut off this whole piece. And it won't give me a lot of scrap, but I think this will be the easiest. I can line that up in here. Make sure those dots are gonna line up on my cut line. Okay, so that will be my long piece across the bottom. And I'm gonna put it more in the corner over here. So you can see it's on the far side, so I'm gonna put it in the corner over here. Again, shiny side is down. And I just wanna note, I am doing all of this out of the same brand of HTV. I know different brands, you may have to do different cut settings. And if that was the case, you would just have to make you know the different ones a no cut and then change your cut settings to, to do that. Um, and then you know you may have to change your um, your heat settings as well, depending on the brand. I have a little bit of overlap right here. It is barely an overlap. I think that'll be fine. This mat needs some love. I can't get this corner to stay stuck down. It needs to be cleaned up. All right, and our last little piece is this other egg, which is gonna be a little two by three section. I'm gonna look at what I have right here. That's a one and a half. So, and then what do I have right here? About a one and a half, okay. So I'm just gonna use this area. We'll start on this side. I'm gonna go three inches down. And then we'll go two inches this way. So I'm just gonna lift this till I get about to my two inch mark. Cut just that. Flip this around. Find my dot for the other section. Line that up. And then I have found that's the easiest way for me to get the best marks. Okay, so I'm gonna come to my third line uh let's see one two three yep so i'm gonna come to my third line down so one two third line and then i'm starting on my eight again so eight down three across so this piece will go right here and making sure that shiny side is down that shiny side is my carrier sheet Okay, we can put that away. So I'm gonna cut all of my design in one cut on my mat. Because of the way that I've cut out these small pieces, it, it's gonna make it easy to cut everything out at once. So yes, it took a little bit of time, but for me, this seems a lot easier to send my mat to the machine once and get it all done in one swoop than it is for me to come back and do it again and again. And then I can also weed everything on the mat at one time. So we can go ahead and pull out the machine. I can go ahead and get this in here. The only other adjustment I'm gonna make is scoot my truck up and over just a little bit more to make sure that I'm within right on this edge here so that way if it um you know it should fit just fine i'm going to try to go a little bit more pushing boundaries a little bit okay i like to use um, a blade for each different type 
of material I use. So this is my vinyl blade. And then on my screen over here, we're gonna go to the sun panel. I am using, I use the flocked HTV setting is where I get the best cuts for this. Um, and then I can go ahead and get my ratchet blade ready. So for me, this is a ratchet blade depth of three, force of 33, speed of five, and one pass. And now I'm gonna go ahead and send that to the machine. And then it's asking me, do you wanna send as is or do you want a mirror? It's just that good reminder. And I'm gonna send as is because we already mirrored our design. everything is done cutting. So now we're going to do a little test uh, to make sure how everything cut before I pull it out off the mat. And this corner is coming up a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pick on this little corner of the truck here and see if I can peel the blue off of the carrier sheet and see if it cuts through. Uh, I find this the most difficult part. I find it easier sometimes to just grab um, my weeding tool and see if I can pick that off. And, okay, I've got my little sharp guy here, so I'm just gonna make a little cut. So I have something to try to pick up here. And then I'm just trying, this corner's hard too because it picked up that whole corner but it looks like everything's weeding really nice. So that tells me that I got a good cut. I can go ahead and unload. If I didn't have a good cut, I would have left it there and then resent everything and let it cut again. But as you can see here, I got a good cut. Everything's peeling up nicely and my carrier sheet has not been cut through. Um, I know this because I've used this material multiple times. The first time I use a material, I will do multiple test cuts to get the right cut settings, and then I just keep track of those so I know the next time I pull out that, um, that material, I know what settings to use. So let's go head over to the table. We'll get these weeded out, and then we'll pull out our cloth and get these pressed on there. All right, I've got my Easy Press over here warming up. I've got my cloth here, I found my weeding tool, and let's go ahead and get weeding. So I've already started with this one. I'm just gonna finish peeling this off. And like I said, I like to weed on my mat, so I've got my clear plastic on here, and then I'm just weeding off my everything around my design. I find it easier to do this on my mat while everything is stuck down, um, so things aren't just peeling away from me. just press um, we have to press this get the wrinkles out so that we're ready to start all right I've got out most of the big wrinkles and I just want to show you how I'm gonna fold this and prepare it so that way you understand what I'm doing so I am gonna take this the long way and fold it in half And you can see the edges match up pretty well. And I'm just gonna kind of give that a light crease there. Um, actually, I think I'm just gonna try to get out some more of these wrinkles while I'm here. It 
And I'm just gonna crease that line a little bit so I know where it's at. Okay, I've got that line, that's my long center. So now when I open it up, I have a little bit of a line there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold both ends into that line. So this is kind of folding it in thirds, I suppose. So taking both ends into that line. And then that is how I came up with the size of my design. And then I'm gonna take it and fold it in half. Being mindful the tag is on this side. So that is gonna be the back. So I'm gonna fold it in half and fold it down. Oops, that didn't work well. So my tag is up here. That's gonna be the back side. So when it folds, this will hang over the back. So it might be easier for me to take what will be my front and fold it down this direction. And I'm just trying to fold it in half again and have all my seams line up at the bottom. Okay, this is how it's going to hang. I'm gonna let it hang this big. So now that I've got it like this, I'm gonna go ahead and try to iron this out some more. Let it go ahead and crease right there. And I'm really just giving myself those crease lines. So that way I know where I'm working. So that is where, that is my working area right now. I'm gonna go ahead and open this back up full. And now you can see I've got my lovely crease lines. Hope you can see those. And now I know where I'm working. I'm working in this piece right here. So I'm gonna crease, try to get these wrinkles out and the creases out of this section. That's gonna be right here in the center. I find these um, cloths are a little bit difficult to work with because they do have so many creases in them. And you know, you can kind of try to pull and iron them out the best that you can. But I do find, you know, you're at some point, you just have to accept that there's going to be wrinkles, which is very hard for me to accept. So I am just trying to stretch and run my iron over it to try to get these wrinkles out. I'm treating my heat press as an iron right now. Um, some of this, you know, my table has some creases in it as well. It's not a completely smooth surface. Um, so I know that's part of my problem. That's my heat press just reminding me to go ahead and use it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit my timer button and let it think that I'm using it so it won't turn off. Okay, so once again, here I am, here's my line, here's my side lines, this is the area that I'm working with. I'm gonna let the rest of it kind of hang off of my table. And now I can go ahead and start pulling in my design. I'm gonna start with my truck, since this is the biggest piece and this is um, you know, kind of the centering of my design. And so here's the top, here's my sides. I'm just gonna try to eyeball where I want that. I want it pretty centered. Oh, you know what? I did not lint roll this. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna put this kind of what was on my center line And I'm just gonna try to pull and stretch that fabric as I press this on here to try to get more of those wrinkles out. I think I like that. Um, it's hard to look at this upside down to know if I'm really straight. I don't think I'm straight. Let's try that again. Okay, 
That looks a lot more straight. I like that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this with the heat um, and get that, go ahead and get that one stuck down. So we'll bring our iron in and this is gonna be bigger than my heat press. So I'm just gonna try to do it in chunks. So I have got 320 degrees for 15 seconds based on the material I'm using and lots of firm downward press pressure to help really solidify that into place. And then when this is done, we're gonna go ahead and lift straight up, scoop my iron over, I'm sorry, my heat press, and then do it again. Um, because my design is bigger than my um, heat area, I have to do it in little areas. But thankfully this isn't too much time. Okay, so the HGV that I'm using is a hot peel, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel that. Nice and slow. And it looks great. So now, I'm gonna try and get my eggs on here next. So I'm gonna start with my big one in the center. So I've got the little marks that are on here that mark the edge of my truck. And then I'm just gonna put my egg down there on top of that. So I can do my egg and then um, I can go ahead and do my wheels at the same time. Oh, I need to cut this. So let me cut this and we can do this all at the same time. All right, I've got my first, my center egg piece on there. I'm gonna cut these wheels and then I can align these where I want them as well. Again, this is all because I don't really have registration marks. So I am just uh, kind of guessing where these are gonna go. You know, it's all just eyeballing. Okay, I like that, that looks good. My wheels appear to be in the right place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit this area, 120 degrees, 15 seconds, and then we'll go ahead and do the other wheel. Oh, and you know what? We'll do this one and then I need to start I need to start covering everything because now I'm hitting straight on that without any protection. Okay, again, hot peel. Okay, those pieces are done. Our little truck is coming along. All right, we can go ahead and I'm gonna add my other egg pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and just peel everything off of my mat now. All right, and then we can do the rest kind of all at once, I think. So I've got my Happy Easter. And I'm just trying to eyeball. I know the edges should line up pretty close with the edge of my truck. Okay, I think that looks good there. And then, uh, let's see. I don't remember which one goes where. This one's going over here. Oh, that one will go there. And that one will go there. Okay, 
and then we'll just cover everything up and then I can go ahead and do the rest of this design all at once. Again, using that firm pressure, 120 degrees for 15 seconds, and then I'll just go over the entire design. Go ahead and peel. This looks like it probably wasn't completely attached yet. Needed a little more time. We are gonna Give this some more heat after we peel everything off. That little corner wasn't quite ready either. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, go ahead and cover everything up again. I have this little piece here I was able to get off of there. All right, we'll cover this again and I'm just gonna make sure that I hit the entire design with some more heat and pressure. Take a look. That looks better. We're gonna go ahead and flip this over and then we'll heat it from the back to make sure that all, that everything went through. Okay, and there is our beautiful design. So now let's go ahead and fold this back up how it's gonna be. So we still kind of have our center line there. Can just bring that into center. Bring this one into center. Fold that down. And there is our lovely, happy Easter tea towel.